Well, he only moved to Bury St Edmunds last year, but already the controversial Tory peer, Lord Tebbit, has got himself into hot water with his new neighbours. Yep, first he fell out with his local pub after wrongly accusing regulars of leaving wine bottles in the street. Now it seems the noise from the recent Chinese New Year celebrations upset him so much he had a bizarre run-in with a dancing dragon. Martin Stewart has the story. What do you get if you cross Norman Tebbit, a no-nonsense politician, with a fancy dress dragon? The answer, according to the Mirror newspaper, is an embarrassed Tory peer and an upset child. The dragon was leading Chinese New Year celebrations outside the Canton restaurant in Bury St Edmunds. Down the road, Lord Tebbit, unaware what the celebrations were for, is reported to have been so angered by the noise, he strode out of his house, down the road, and confronted the revellers. There's even a suggestion in today's paper the 77-year-old may have kicked the dragon, leading the child inside it upset. Upset us as a Chinese, and they're really entertaining, and they're good fun. Nobody else has ever objected to it. So I think it's a bit over the top. Maybe you should go on an anger management course, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's what I'd advise, if, it, if it's true that he did kick up such a fuss. You should uh, apologise, not only to the child, but in the paper, to uh, everybody else, you know what I mean, that's uh, celebrating uh, uh, Chinese New Year. Mr Chung, the restaurant owner, has held the same celebrations for the past 20 years. Lord Tebbit has now apologised for his actions, telling the Mirror, I got jostled by a dragon. I've never been jostled by a dragon before. I gave it a shove and then got on my way. Now, when I spoke to Mr Chung, himself a Conservative councillor on the phone this morning, he was keen to play the story down. He said he and Lord Tebbit had met after the event and the whole thing had been sorted out amicably. But this isn't the first time Lord Tebbit has fallen out with his neighbours. Just three months ago, he had a misunderstanding with the owners of the Queen's Head pub. He had to apologise after accusing its regulars of leaving wine bottles in the street. He lined them up on the windowsill of the Queen's Head, only to discover the pub did not sell those brands. Not the smoothest of arrivals for Lord Tebbit, who only moved to Suffolk last year. But then 2010 is the year of the tiger, who, according to Chinese folklore, are notoriously short-tempered. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Barry St Edmunds. <laughs> oh dear. Right, factory workers in Lotus in Norfolk are used to working with streamlined bodies, aren't they? But uh, they've got an added treat today when one of the world's most beautiful supermodels just dropped by as you do. Naomi Campbell had come to thank the company for donating eight cars to her Haiti earthquake appeal and to meet the men and women who'd built them. Natalie Gray now reports. They're both famous for their hot bodies, so the sports car manufacturer Lotus and the supermodel Naomi Campbell seem like a natural pairing, and it's all for charity. The company has given Naomi eight Lotus Evoras to be auctioned off for her Haiti earthquake appeal. Each one of them carries her name, and she was here to say thank you to the company and to the workers who've been building them in their own time. We wanted to do our contribution in helping Haiti because it's an country that's in desperate need how it was before and even more so now. It's not every day a supermodel pops by and thinking their mates might not believe it, many captured the moment on their mobile phones. Is she as beautiful as she, in real life as she is on the telly? Yes she is, yes, Stanham. Has she made your day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 200,000 people have died in the Haiti disaster. The Red Cross say three million have been affected. What were the pictures that touched you most about this disaster? So many, there are so many. I think one of them that stuck in my mind was seeing a picture of a man discarding a ch dead child upon a pile of dead children, but he wasn't even looking as he discarded this child. And it was, oh, it was, oh, it's, it's horrible. Why did you give up your time for Haiti? Well, I think we were all touched by what we see on the television, um, and I just want, everyone at Lewis just want to do that small bit. It's, it's the least we can do. You know, we need to support these people in having such a terrible, terrible time, and an hour of our time is, is nothing considering the whole amount of trouble they are currently in. Three of the eight cars have already been sold at Naomi's Fashion for Relief charity show last week. Naomi's boyfriend bought the first car for a whopping £320,000. But there are still five cars left. And if you've got that kind of money burning a hole in your pocket, then you have until Sunday. That's when the auction closes. It's hoped more than a million pounds will be raised from the twinning of one of the world's most beautiful sports cars with one of the world's most beautiful supermodels. Natalie Gray, Anglia News, Hethel in Norfolk. 
wow. combination. Yeah. Except they raise loads. Next, we've got an amazing picture to share with you, actually. Yeah, let's take a look at uh, these three. Norfolk wildlife photographer Richard Brooks patiently waited night after night to capture this perfect picture of a trio of young barn owls. Oh, they oh. were spotted using a window for an early evening surveillance mission at Christchurch in Fulmudston near Fakenham in Norfolk. Richard thinks the inquisitive birds may have been peering out to look at him. I sat there sort of every night uh, pretty well from the moment the, uh, the, the barn owls were heard calling, which was probably sometime in June, and I actually got this picture in early July. I mean, I wasn't literally there every night, but I, whenever I could, I spent a couple of hours there. But it was just a matter of waiting for the, uh, the three birds to come uh, together at the right moment. That is the definition Beautiful. of patience, isn't it? Aren't they? Lovely. Mm. Right, here's what to expect on the national news in a couple of minutes from now. Now, thank you very much for all your emails on coincidences. Last night we did the story about the two Rhiannon and Elizabeth Joneses. You sent in some more of your coincidences. There are some brilliant ones. Yeah, here. Judy Payne from Wellingborough in Northamptonshire says, I have two sons. Martin is married to Rachel Louise. And now Lee has just got engaged to, yes, you've guessed it, Rachel Louise. And we loved this one, didn't we? Tony Harris uh, was saying, many years ago as a young teacher, I got a job at a school at Rochford in Essex. The head of the department was also called Tony Harris. One month, I received his paycheck in error, which was considerably more than mine. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to give it back. <laughs> I wonder if you got yours. <laughs> David Anthony from Grafham says, uh, My birthday's on May the 13th, as is my wife's birthday, her brother, my cousin Catherine, my brother in law, and my good friend Chuck. So many of those. What's the other one? I've got another one here. Robert, Roger, Rodney, Roy, and Ron all go out for a drink together. So there's a coincidence <laughs> for you. Here's the weather now with Amanda. And that's all we've got time for this evening. Thanks so much for joining us. See you again tomorrow night. Bye bye. Bye bye.